Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. After turning the fin vase a few weeks ago, I just had to try another, this time an enclosed form, with the same sort of fins, but with a different grain orientation. This is a cross-grain hollow form. It uses a lot the same techniques. However, I hollowed out the inside just a little bit more, which made cutting the fins really scary. As I was cutting these fins, I was constantly afraid that I would cut through and wind up with a two-part fin hollow form. So let's make this fin hollow form and see how it works. It has been about nine months since this cherry was harvested. It has spent this time with the end grain sealed and in a plastic bag and somewhat sheltered. Even so, it is still green. I'd say about half dry. I'm pounding a two-prong center into the wood. If the end of the center mushrooms from the hammer, I'll just grind it back. I want it solid through the bark and into the wood. With the wood now mounted to the lathe, the tailstock provides support and security. I'm working from the bottom with a large bowl gouge, trying to ride a bevel as much as possible while roughing the bowl. This cherry wood smells great, kind of like cherries. It does not take too long to cut the wood to a round shape. Now for the basic shape, kind of like a fat vase. I'm also cutting a tenon on the bottom and another little lip that will help guide my eyes for the shape. Hopefully I can avoid cutting too thin a bottom. The focus of this project is to have a small hollow form with fins. It's kind of hard to balance the outer shape that is now very visible with the inside of the fins shape that will be cut later. I'm using my large bowl gouge with push cuts to quickly remove wood and with shear scraping to refine and smooth out the wood. This cherry is great turning wood. Now with the bowl reversed into my chuck using the tenon I cut just a bit earlier, I'm choosing a fairly flat top to emphasize the fins. I'm still using my gouge for wood removal and for refining the shape. I'm going to drill the first hole into the interior with a Forstner bit. This is not difficult since the hole is going into cross grain and the cherry is still soft from being wet. Now to hollow out the interior. I resolved a couple of years ago not to do any deep and large diameter hollow forms until I could do it without risking a shoulder injury. I've been working on an articulating hollowing setup, but I'm still working out the last details, so that's all I will say about it right now. Suffice to say, I'm hollowing what I hope will be a good interior shape. You would not be able to see this part anyway. Now for the scary part, cutting the fins. How deep can I cut the fins? I hollowed out the interior, so there is no common distance from the outer perimeter to the central hollow. This will be a measure, cut, measure, cut, again and again operation. I'm working from top to bottom by eye. I don't expect a lot of warping. This wood is too dry already. My biggest fear now is cutting too deep and then to have a two-part hollow form. Disaster. Another part is ensuring the fins are cut evenly. I found that shining a flashlight from behind the form helps me assess the curve at the inside of the fins. Making them even means cutting the fins a little deeper, but cutting deeper risks that two-part hollow form again. I can conquer my fears. Finally, I'm reversing the forms onto a faceplate. I've shaped the faceplate to allow the top to be inside the faceplate and the shoulders of the hollow form to rest on the faceplate. The tailstock with live center provides support while I trim up the bottom. I'll clean the, up the nub with a sanding pad on the drill press. After it dries a bit more, I'll sand it a bit more, then 
Finish with walnut oil. This hollow form is not a simple project, yet it is an interesting one that I will be turning more like this one. With the wood somewhat dry already, I don't expect dramatic warping, but the fins will provide that little bit more perspective that I find interesting. As scary as it was, the face is worth it. That's all for my hollow form. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Come back next week for a new wood turning video.